Hi everybody, welcome back to These Are My Cars. Uh, so the topic for today is checking installed valve spring height. The example head we have here is off of a Ford Lima 2.3. The car I'm working on is an 88 Mercur XR4Ti. I've seen some videos where people will install the retainer and then they'll come in with a straight edge, something like this, and then get underneath it and then try to hold everything in place and then measure the installed valve spring height using the plunger off of the back of their vernier calipers. And I think maybe if you've got enough hands and everything is stable enough, then that might actually work. The problem I've noticed with this particular valve train is that when you pull this up, uh, this, this um, spring retainer is actually a bit rocky. And so it needs to have, really have a spring underneath it to give even consistent tension in order for you to, you know, do a method like that. And so a simple solution for that is made by Comp Cams. I got this off of Amazon. It's catalog number 4758-2. You get two springs. As far as I can tell, both springs are the same. They're low tension, so they're very easy to install. You can install it by uh, you can install these underneath the, the, the spring retainer by hand. You don't need any special tools. The nice thing about that is that they've got enough tension. They're actually the perfect amount of tension to hold this retainer rigidly in the correct position. And then you can measure it. Now, I'm not a big fan of the straight edge and vernier caliper. Uh, I think that for something like this, you're, in, you're assembling an engine, things need to be done accurately. And the way I recommend it is to go and buy yourself a telescoping gauge. Telescoping, telescoping, telescoping gauge. Uh, you can also get those, those off of Amazon. You'll see sets of six for something like 20 bucks. Uh, they're, you know, they're made overseas. I highly recommend don't bother get the one telescoping gauge that you actually need for your project. And I was able to find this, as you can see, it's a Sterrett. It's made in America, made in the US. And I got this, no, no, no kidding, I got this gauge for $23. Um, now, I, I think that was a bit of an unusual situation. Maybe Amazon made a mistake because I've gone back since and this is over $100. Um, but I've, I've also looked at uh, telescoping gauges in the correct size uh, that are a shorter handle, and you can, you can get them again in a Sterador or a Michitoyo for like $35. So instead of spending 20 bucks on a set of six gauges made overseas, spend $35, $40 and get a quality tool that you can trust and you'll have the rest of your life. Uh, so this is what I used, and the advantage of using the telescope gauge is, of course, you can get underneath here, uh, you, you know, let go of the tension in the back here, the telescope gauge is spring-loaded, and it will apply the correct tension. The ends, sorry if that focuses, the ends are actually rounded, so it will, you know, it's, it's really, you know, used for measuring the, you know, inside of, like, cam bearings and, and you know, inside of any uh, 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 item, uh, but the ends are rounded so you can measure the inside of a rounded device like a cam bearing or a main bearing. Um, so this is what I would recommend. You can get a nice accurate measurement and then you can measure what that distance is again using a reliable you know, Sterrett micrometer. You know, again, you're assembling an engine and thousands matter. Um, now, I'm not a machinist, I'm not a professional, but I like to do things as accurately as I possibly can. Uh, because at, at some point, I want to put a big cam in here, and I need to know that the installed valve spring heights are correct, and that I can go to exactly the, the lift that uh, the manufacturer recommends. Uh, I've ported and polished this head. I've had it flow tested, and I know that it has it, the intake side has its max flow at a half inch lift. So I wanna get a cam that's as close to uh, a 0.5 inch lift as possible. And I know with 
these valve springs with these retainers, uh, if they're installed at their correct height, which is 1.45 inches, you can go up to a uh, 0.510 lift uh, before hitting coil bind. So I may not go all the way to a half inch lift cam. I might do something like a 490 or a 480 just to give myself a little bit of headroom. Uh, but again, I want to make sure that these are installed correctly such that when I upgrade the cam, I'm not going to be in any trouble with coil bind. Okay. So, uh, and as you can see, I've already gone through, I've measured all of these. Uh, the height for this is actually 1.500 for all of these, well, within plus or minus two or three thou. Uh, so I need a 50 thou shim. Uh, so off I go. I'm now starting to assemble the head properly with those shims. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you find this useful. Uh, if uh, you notice anything that I've mentioned is inaccurate, please leave me comments down below. Thank you very much. Bye.